Hello and welcome to another episode of Tutorial Thursdays. Today we're going to have a look at PID loop performance. We've all been there. One of your controls was performing fine, but nowadays it's just not as performant anymore. One very interesting metric would be the time to steady state. Is my controller actually able to follow the set point changes that my operators or my engineers are making? That's what we're going to do and have a look at today, because that can be a very interesting monitor for you to set up to watch the process in the background as well. I've prepared a simple data set for you. You're going to find it in the description if you want to follow along. That being said, let's dive in. All right, we're looking at a simple data set here. We have our set point for pressure, which is the green tag, and we have the um, pinkish red tag, which is the pressure reading itself. As you can see, for every set point change made, the pressure is following along nicely, but I have heard that there's a drift happening over time and I want to investigate that a little bit deeper. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually pinpoint where all the set point changes are. And as you can see on this, uh, on this view right here, um, I'm not always stepping between the same levels, right? Operators are changing this, adjusting this um, based on feed rates, based on quality information that they get. So I have to be a little bit flexible. Now, to identify where the set point changes are made, I'm going to use a formula. So I'm going to go into the tag builder, I'm going to open up a new formula, and I'm going to copy paste what I had prepared, just so I save a little bit of time. I'm going to add a formula here that is, if B minus A equals zero, that means the two tags are the same. I'm going to return a zero. If not, I'm going to return the difference. But here's a trick. I'm going to use the pressure set point for both values. So basically I'm comparing set point to set point and I'm going to add a time shift. In this case, I know that my process is supposed to be stable after about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to enlarge that window a little bit and make this 25. What will this give me? I'm going to give this a name, Tutorial Thursday set point change and hit save. When this tag shows up on my screen, what you'll see is that for every set point change that is made, I'm going to have a step, as you can see here, of size set point change. So I was stepping here from 53 to 56. So my tag returns a tree value. And we'll return this tree value for that time shift that I had indicated. So 25 minutes. And then it's going to go down to zero again. When the next step is made, I'm here stepping back from 56 to 53. It's going to return a minus tree. And that minus three will be again there for 25 minutes, unless of course I make another set point change. What this allows me to do is use this tag value now when it's not zero, I know a set point change was made and I always have nice time boxed windows of 25 minutes to work with. This is going to be very helpful in the next step. All right, that was one thing I needed. The second thing I need is actually a tag that shows me the deviation between set point and PV. So whenever that is zero, I'm right on set point. Of course, when I make a set point change, this value is going to jump up and then it's going to take some time for the PID controller to drive that value back down to zero. And the amount of time it takes, that's the value that I'm interested in. So I'm going to create another formula. In this case, I'm simply going to use absolute value of B minus A divided by C. Now, what are the values in this case? The B is going to be the set point. A is going to be the reading or the, the measurement itself. And then the C value is going to be that set point change. Why? Because I want to normalize the result. Whenever um, I make a set point change of three degrees, bars, whatever, um, I cannot really compare that one to one without normalizing it to a set point change of one or even two. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm not going to worry about dividing my zero. Trend manager is just going to interpolate those values. And um, I'm going to use the value that I've created before to get rid of those zeros anyway. So in this case, this is going to be to TT for Tutorial Thursday. And this is going to be deviation for the deviation that is uh, between set point and PV. And when I hit save, this value is going to show up here in the light green. I'm going to change color here to something more, a little bit more dark so that we can see it clearly. Now, what you see is that whenever a set point change is made, this value indeed starts off high and then is going to be driven down to just about zero. And then whenever the next set point change is made, it's going to start from that value. After looking at these tags for a moment, I noticed that um, it would also be interesting to get rid of the negative signs. A set point change minus or plus three 
should not really have an effect on the pressure here. Um, so I want to get rid of the negative values. I'm going to go back into that formula. I'm going to open the save tags. I'm going to look up this uh, deviation tag. I'm going to select it. I'm going to edit it. And what I'm going to do is actually bring the absolute value or bring the um, set point change inside of the calculation of the absolute value. So when I hit save, this is going to change the look of my tag a little bit. But indeed, now I'm always working with positive values. It's going to be a little bit easier to, uh, to interpret these results because if I zoom out every time I notice I have this kind of sawtooth behavior that I introduced by uh, using the calculations that I did. All right, now I'm going to leverage this tag now in a value-based search. And in this case, what my conditions are is that the set point change is not equal to zero. That means I'm actually doing a set point change. And I'm going to look for periods where this deviation is higher than, let's say, 0 0.05. That means I have reached 95% of the, uh, the deviation. Only 5% is remaining. And of course, there the noise can start um, having a little bit of impact. So I'm going to stick with 95%. Let me hit search. And we notice that we have 51 individual set point changes. By default, these are ordered chronologically. But I'm going to sort them by duration instead. And what you'll notice is that there's a lot of results that are quite short, between 5, 10 minutes. Um, but there's also a number of longer results between 15 and 20 minutes. So that is definitely something that is not normal. This is not supposed to be a wide range like this. Uh, and let me have a look at one of these longer results. I'm just going to grab one here, 17 minutes, for example. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to make this one hour. And what I notice is if I change the scale on this one, I'd set it to manual scale. You notice that indeed after about 20 minutes, I'm really close to that set point. So that is what um, I saw uh, happening there. While for the shorter results, if I grab a shorter one, let me go back to this bucket here, maybe one of eight minutes. I'm going to zoom out on both sides. Now you notice that, again, let me change the scale. I was using auto uh, manual scale here. I probably should have put it on auto scale, then I wouldn't have to worry about that. But what you see indeed is that here, after only about eight, nine, 10 minutes, I get to that desired set point value. So definitely something is going on with this controller. It's not supposed to be such a wide um, variation of, uh, of, of performance here. And obviously this has to do with the way I created or generate this data set to have such a wide range. But just to show you that there's, um, this is kind of one of those things that can go unnoticed for a long time and definitely has an, uh, an, an impact, a significant impact on your, uh, on your plant performance. So what I wanted to do here is um, show an easy way to identify set points, use that to do searches. Um, but I want to go one step further, third step, um, is I want to set up a monitor on, uh, on this because 15 minutes can be acceptable, but anything longer than 15 minutes is, um, is, is becoming too long and it's something I have to investigate. So what I will do is I will change the conditions of the search slightly. I will make this at least 15 minutes and hit search. Now I'm not really interested in the results. I'm more interested here in saving this for monitoring purposes. So I'm going to call this PID deviation monitor and hit save. You see the steps from searching and investigating to monitoring are very easy. Um, and when I go to my monitoring menu, this is now available for configuration. So whenever this happens, I'm going to send myself an email. This could be uh, person A at trendminer.com and maybe I want to add a second person, person B at trendminer.com as well. Don't spam your colleagues. PID performance degrading and I can add another an additional step to investigate. But in this case, that's all I want to have. I'm going to hit save and all I have to do now is turn this monitor on and from now on, Trendminer is going to be watching this for you in the background. Whenever I see or whenever Trendminer sees that the PID is not really able to catch up, it's going to send me a notification so that I can investigate. Of course, in real life scenarios, I can add some more information. For example, I wanna know or I wanna be sure that this is only being monitored when the uh, PID controller is in automatic mode. 
So I can add those as conditions to the search uh, if I desire to do so. But for today's tutorial purposes, I just wanted to show you uh, a nice and easy way to uh, isolate the set point changes, calculate the performance of the PID loop by checking how long it takes to get to steady state, or, or at least what we define as being steady state, which is being at 95% of that deviation or between 5% of the SP and PV uh, range. Uh, and then we set up a monitor to uh, alert us whenever this happens. There we have it. I hope you learned something today, a creative way to use the set point and the PV to investigate controller performance, because we don't always have the controller output as well to use in our investigation. As always, if you have other ideas, other topics you want to see touched, leave us a comment below and we'll be happy to follow up. See you next week.